Welcome to the Holy Spirit Church in Valga. My name is Father Viktor Markovic. I am the, uh, here like uh, pastor of this church. So I will try to introduce for you a little bit the church. Um, church is built between 1906 and 1907. It's built mostly with the uh, Lithuanian and Polish workers, which was building the railroad here from Riga to, I think they were going to Pskov, then to Tartu. So they needed a church and they speak with the prelate of the church, Atanasovich, who initiated and they built of this building, celebrating it for the long time was congregation. But then, after the Second World War, the church was closed and was taken by the sport club uh, Kalev. And they didn't care about the building. Here was a sport zal. When we're staying now, they were playing different sports. But since they didn't care, the roof failed. And then the church was also burned. So for a long time, the church was like a ruin state. In 1990s, the church was given back to the Catholic Church. So the renovation, little by little start, but the congregation gathered together and the first celebration of the congregation was done on the 5th of November in 1990 and was made in the, in the building of the Lutheran Church. Important is to know that the church, that the congregation start to live again their life. Till the church was not finished and we start to celebrate here. Here was serving many, many uh, priests coming from Riga, from Tartu. Then when the, the, the possibility to be here uh, become already done, because there is additional building when the priest can leave, and there is a space uh, for people to gather, to have sacristy, to have everything. So then the priest had to begin to live here in Valga. Right now is a situation that congregation is older. Uh, I am here basically from Sunday to Wednesday. And then since I were serving also in Tartu, I'm passing to Tartu and from Wednesday to Sunday I'm there. Then I come again here, so I'm somehow between two churches, but I'm taking care about, uh, now about this church, uh, keeping it open, alive. We have in congregation also some families uh, who are younger. We have uh, some children, uh, so we're trying little by little to make this congregation open. We have part of the congregation from Latvia coming to us because the closest church to them is the 40 kilometers away, so they are coming to the service. Also, we start to have one in a month church in, in a, a Latvian language. The priest from Latvia come, he serve. It's a good communion, and it's a good communion with the other churches in the town, so we see that there is here, there is a renewal of the life of the church little by little, raised hope also soon to make some more activities to somehow attract the people to, to find those who are far away already from the church and to begin to somehow to extending this church through the congregation. Because building is beautiful, but without the people <laughs> it's difficult to keep this building uh, alive. So we need a lot of work. We need a lot of work. So here we see the altar. Altar is a basically center of the happening in the church. On the altar we celebrate Eucharist. The Eucharist is the center of every Christian life, in which we always remember that passion and resurrection of Christ, receiving Him in our life in the, in the species of uh, body and blood of Christ. So we receive Holy Communion. Um, on the altar, as you see, we always have a cross. There is some little flowers, and there is always candles which are representing presence of Christ 
among us during the celebration. This is the main altar. Behind, you see the little altar uh, existing. It's altar near the tabernacle. Tabernacle is a place where we keeping the, um, the holy hosts. The, the host in which we, when we have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, taking from their nice host, putting in the, in the monstrance, and we have adoration. Giving time for all of us in a prayer to be with the Christ in front of him. So also we there keeping the some number of the host for the Holy Communion, uh, always being ready if we have a larger number of the people to somehow to serve them and to to sometimes we have some people coming to visit or some groups coming to visit so we need to be ready always to somehow to offer for them um, also possibility to celebrate the Eucharist. Uh, this church is now part of this Camino, they call it the way of the Baltic, Baltic Sea Way, I don't know how they call it. Is, uh, is, uh, we have two guests yesterday here, or yeah, on Sunday, two guests which coming, they are walking this way. They come from Tallinn, walking there from Poland. They will walk to Riga uh, all these days. Um, so we have more and more pilgrims present, so we want them also to have possibility to know that they are welcome here. We have here also Ambon, which is the place from where we proclaim the Word of God. The Word of God always proclaimed in every Eucharist, which is a part, which is a God coming to the life of the people, entering their life interdating the, the, their life with him. The people are many times helped and encouraged to live their life as a Christian, truly as a Christian. Here we have presence of the Virgin Mary. And we have two, I said, um, pictures here. One is the Virgin Mary with Jesus and the other is Jesus Christ. And, uh, representing the secret heart of Jesus, which basically uh, enlightening the people coming to them. Uh, to the, and we remember then when the Christ was a pierced, there was, a, there was a, a water, blood and water coming out, which was, means that life coming from Christ always to those who are to him. As well, we have two pictures there, to Mary, and her immaculate uh, heart and Christ with his secret heart. Every altar always has candles because the presence of Christ is uh, mentioned with the candles during the, the uh, Eucharist. And the altar where there is a tabernacle, as you see that there is a red light. That light is always on, which means that the presence of the Holy One is here. We're turning off only in that day when we moving the, the Holy One. There is a little sacristy with another tabernacle, and then the candle is lighted there. It's basically on the, on the, uh, before the, very, very much before the uh, Easter, in the Holy Thursday, in the end of the, of the Eucharist, we're passing there, and then we have time spending there in the prayer with the, with the, during the time of the Lent, every Friday, we pray here the Stations of the Cross. Stations of the Cross are the, we, there is a 14 of them. We have 15 one, but this is uh, just a gift of the, of the uh, uh, one who doing it. So this is the Passion of the Christ, which Preparing ourselves for the Easter, we are passing every Friday these Passions of the Christ with the readers, readings and prayers, uh, and some songs uh, passing. Usually we have a group of the people which come in here and we together walk 
stations of the cross. It's a part, very important part of the preparation for the Easter, but can be done also outside of the time of the Easter in any possible way that the people want it, and they can do it here in the church. So there is behind two, I would say, cabins, two places. This is a place for the, where we do the sacrament of reconciliation. Sacrament of reconciliation in a Catholic Church is necessary because we are sinners, we do the sins. The only way that the mortal sins, for example, those difficult sins, go away is to come and to give them to Christ, in which, after that, He forgives it to the people, giving them back their life, which they ontologically they are losing in the sin. So usually I'm sitting in, the people approaching to little window, it's saying it's sin, I give the short, uh, I will say, extension to help them, give them the, 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 uh, what they need to do for expiation of their sins, and then in the name of the Christ, I absolve them sins, anything a priest can do, only priest can do. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's a very important sacrament because it's helping us to live in a healthy way our Christian life. Tower was never built because in the time when they was building, they didn't allow the, to the church to lift up the tower. So the church is without bells and without the tower according to the laws on which is built. I don't know now if it's possible or not, but in the time that the church was established, is, uh, it was not allowed to the church to build it.